Good morning. It's Friday, April 17th, 2015. This is Tech Talk Today, episode 159. And yeah, I guess I'm being a little bit of a dark. I, I went a little Oprah on you, didn't I? It's Friday. And uh, why am I so excited? Because it's actually an hour later than I normally start. So I've got like that much more energy. You know what I'm talking about, right? Like you have your sweet spot where the cat. Oh, you know what means? The caffeine's probably about to wear off by the time the show ends, which means I should be caffeinating right now. Now, you know what I'm talking about. Don't judge where you get up, you wake up, you get a little caffeine in your system. And at first it makes you feel a little weird. But by the time the caffeine's fully in, you're feeling good right now. I'm feeling caffeinated. And that's a good thing because man, does the news suck today? Yeah. Well, here's a here. What I like to do every now and then on the uh, tech talk show is uh, tell you about the stories I'm not going to talk about. <laughs> How about that? What a dumb thing to do, right? Uh, so here's an example of an Apple story that I'm not going to talk about today. Apple plans to launch Apple Pay in Canada in November. There you go. If you care about that, now you know. That's essentially all you really need to know. Here's another uh, Apple story I don't really feel like talking about today. Tim Cook has the best pay for performance rating among highest paid executives, earning 65.2 million last year. Okay. All right. Great. Here's what I'm trying to get at, people. The news is full of Apple stuff because it's Apple Watch time. Oh, and everybody wants to talk about all these things. Not Chris, though. I think I feel like we've talked about it. We've done it. Now let's wait for things to ship and see what people have to say. But gets beyond the reviews. Let's get down to the marketing. One thing the chat room wants to talk about today, and I think this is a particularly interesting story and probably one we'll expand upon in the Linux Action Show this Sunday. Microsoft is making a stripped-down version of Windows to rival Linux on these low, low level like virtualizers and container environments. And I actually think this sort of came out of the original agreement between Microsoft and Docker. Do you remember this? I think it was... Last fall, Microsoft announced that it would add Linux-like container technology to the future version of Windows Server, the one that's not out yet. Today, actually yesterday, the company revealed that it is also developing a super slim version of Windows that will run what it describes as a new kind of container, one that provides an added level of security. The OS is called Windows Server Nano. It's adorable. According to a Microsoft spokesperson, the company is building a, a way of wrapping containers in its Hyper-V virtualization technology. This is what I love about Microsoft. They're so, they're so adamant about stuffing industry buzzwords in there that they've actually just stuffed incompatible industry buzzwords in this paragraph. So let's break this down. The company is building a way of wrapping containers. Full stop. Now, containers are not virtualized technology. Containers run in the same memory space. They're process isolated by the kernel, okay? Containers are not virtual machines. They do not emulate the network card, the disk. Uh, they do not emulate all of the processor and all of the things on the, on the motherboard. They do not pretend to have a video card, okay? They are not entirely separate machines. That is called virtualization. Containerization is where you just isolate the process on a basic level, and you can. there's different levels of security there. Containerization is not virtualization. But the sentence reads, the company is building a way of wrapping containers in its Hyper-V virtualization technology. Well, so then they're VMs. They're not containers. You're just taking the container technology and you're running inside a hypervisor. That's not Docker. That's a bastardization of what the Docker brand is. I don't understand this. And, and so the idea is, Microsoft wants to have a stripped down operating systems along the lines of CoreOS which is, a, which is a, a new and up-and-coming Linux operating system that's particularly suited at running containers across a large number of computers with uh, etcd and all these kinds of uh, distributed systems. I think this is really kind of an interesting, like, I don't understand Microsoft here. And I, maybe I'm misunder, misunderstanding the technology based here, but it seems like to me that perhaps Microsoft doesn't get the fundamental value of containers. When you don't have to emulate the entire hardware stack, the motherboard, and all of these components, think about what is all inside your PC. And even if you have a hypervisor that is aware that it is, hyper, that it is virtualized, even then, even then there's still a considerable, considerable, considerable amount of overhead compared to a container, right? Because a lot of times you pre-allocate the amount of RAM to a container. You, or I'm sorry, to a virtual machine. You pre-allocate the amount of disk to a virtual machine. All of these things are constant overhead, whereas a container only takes as much overhead as the process requires. That means the density on a server can be so much higher with more containers. And when you move that into a virtual environment, you fundamentally negate the advantage of containers. The only advantage the Microsoft system has is that it can run some of the other containers that the rest of the industry that's using Linux is using, but not actually in how you use a container. This is, this is the Microsoft we're all impressed by. This isn't a technological solution. This is a band-aid to try to keep them relevant on a platform that's no longer suited for the cloud. That's my take on it.
Microsoft says that because you're running Hyper-V, though, you get added security that you get with virtualization in the container environment. So they have a great way of spinning it. Look, uh, you get more security because it's virtualized. Yes, that is probably technically true, although Hyper-V has had some problems in the past, but all virtualizers do. So uh, it is sort of Microsoft trying to get in on the container trend, and to me, in a way, it seems a bit impotent, but uh, what do I know? I'm not a server guy anymore. It just used to be my gig. Uh, just to follow up on a story, unless Mumble Room going once on comments on Microsoft and their Nano OS and their container stuff, anybody want to chime in before I move on? Going twice, three times, strike. All right. Uh, oh, you know, I should probably say, you guys, I, unless I did, I have you muted. Did anybody want to speak up? I don't, I don't think I did. Okay. All right. Moving on. All right. WikiLeaks has published uh, the hacked Sony emails uh, and documents that we have talked about for a long time on this show. Remember the Sony hack? We followed it like by day by day when it first happened on this show. And now it's not so interesting. But one bit of tidbits that's come out is uh, here's an interesting one from the Sony hacks. You can now go to WikiLeaks and WikiLeaks has put up a search engine to search what has been published. And one of the things that came out is that uh, Snapchat gave Scott Forstall like uh, a, a small investment to have him um, consult. Now, Scott Forstall is the executive that was outed by Tim Cook a little while after Steve Jobs died. Scott Forstall is the guy that came from Next with Steve Jobs. Scott Forstall is the guy behind iOS. Scott Forstall was one of the guys that was behind the design of iOS, that real, um, what did they call it? Uh, ISO, uh, what did they call that? Chat room, or, uh, mumble room, what did they call the design in iOS where it was really frilly and had leather? What do they call that? Skeuomorphic. Yeah, skeuomorphic. Yeah, he was the guy behind the skeuomorphic look on Apple's products. That's Scott Forstall, and and it, and and in the Sony leaks, it comes out that for some reason they had leaks emails from Snapchat, and Snapchat's been going out and getting some of these old executives and getting them to consult, and they're exchanging ownership in the company stock essentially. Uh, there's a lot of other interesting. That's probably the least interesting thing, although it was kind of interesting to me. Uh, you know, because what, what that meant to me is these guys in the tech, tech sector, right, they go make a big, they get a hit product on the market, and then they've basically got it made for life. Now they, now he's a paid consultant for the rest of his life. Scott Forstall is going to be making dividends on Snapchat because of his success at Apple. And it's kind of an interesting perk of being successful in Silicon Valley that we don't talk about a lot. All right. Okay, one more story while we're on the Apple stuff. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to uh, a, a, a gentleman who, even, even though I'm not a... Um, when I was a Mac user, I, I really liked his reviews. But even now, when I no longer use it as a main operating system, um, John Syracuse's OS X reviews for the last 15 years have always been really interesting. He really digs down into the Unix end of uh, the OS X operating system, which is an area that most reviews never dig into. And he gets down into the file systems. And, and really, like if you ever wanted to learn the true limitations of HFS Plus on Apple's platform, uh, John Syracuse, uh, nobody nobody lays it out as eloquently as John Syracuse does. He is my reference. He has been the reference for how to do a review. These multi-page reviews that you see now where people go into insane detail and it's like 8, 10, 9, 15 pages of reviews with screenshots and charts and benchmarks. John Syracuse started that 15 years ago on the web. And uh, he is uh, retiring from doing this now. And I, I, I think it's worth noting because I so often lament proper journalism online. And uh, John's was truly some of it. And it was some of the best. And even if you're not a big fan of the operating system, if you are a fan of technology, reading through his reviews was truly, truly entertaining. Because you just, nothing was off limits from a technological standpoint. And uh, so when Apple would roll out new technologies, and I would be very curious how they would compare to technologies available in Linux and open source uh, platforms, nobody, nobody could give me the kind of breakdown that John Syracuse has. So I'll miss those reviews, even though I'm not a Mac OS X user. Um, I think they're just really fantastic. So I'll, I have a link in the uh, show notes to Ars Technica's write-up about that, and uh, you can find out more. I think his website is uh, hypercritical.co, and you can read more about it there. And uh, that Ars Technica uh, uh, article has all of John's reviews going back to uh, December 14th, 1999, when it was almost more next than it was OS X. That's pretty neat. Uh, and then, well, last but not least, uh, you just can't avoid it today. This is really, it makes you, you know, we, we, we talk about the hostility in the Linux community. Well, how about this one? Fanboys stab each other over Android versus Apple argument. Yep, this is this is this really happened. Uh, the ever heated battle over mobile ecosystems left two wounded fanboys today in Oklahoma. Two roommates were hospitalized after a drunken fight about the relative benefits of Android and Apple phones. Police arrived at the apartment complex. They learned that the roommates had been drinking and arguing over their phones, the police report states. Uh, the report then indicates the helpful addition that police did not respond when our photog photographer asked which phone is better. 
Good idea, cops. You don't need to get in the middle of that. Oh, what is the matter with us? There you go. Well, Mumbrum, you were awfully quiet today, but it's understandable. We had a pretty new crew in there, but thank you guys for being here. Uh, hey, before we go, you know what? I'm going to pull in Dreamsy and Colton. Hey, Col- Dreamsy and Colton. Thanks for, for showing up a little late, but it was at an odd time. It's been an odd time all week, and it's probably going to be a little odd next week, too, just with everybody coming and going. Um, I'm trying to keep it all up to date on the calendar. You guys, uh, any anybody want to chime in on any stories before I wrap up and uh, play our end of show video? No. I can't think of anything. Well, I, I appreciate you being here, anyways. Yeah, the news. Uh, uh, I was like, wow, this is this is our Friday news this week. I was thinking we ought to do an NSFW dirty show, like we talk about drinking, we swear, and we just don't even do a tech show. We just hang out and chat about stuff. Drinking game. Yeah, you know, and I think uh, one of these Fridays I will get around to doing music. Uh, we had a couple of people email Angela, but then we've just gotten slammed with them. Um, you know, it is when you're when you're flying in like uh, I don't even I haven't even actually done the count, but what is it six, seven, eight people? I don't know. Uh, man, that is a lot of that is a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, Angela is on the road right now with Noah. I want to hey if they're listening, hello guys. And uh, there he's she's dropping him off at my house. I'm going to go leave. Go down, pick him up, then get emissions checked because now my tabs have to be renewed. So, But in order to renew my tabs, I have to get my emissions checked. But if I'm going to be driving like 100 miles this weekend, I should probably have current tabs. So it's like all these little dependency events that in, on, on the face of them don't take a lot of time, but they do all add up. Uh, and we really appreciate your support during all of this. You can go over to patreon.com slash today to support this show, all of the shows, to support the network and all of our efforts here and help us extend when we get a little tight. And we are definitely a little tight right now. We are super extended to make all of this happen, and nothing would be more relief than getting your support over at patreon.com slash today because it is making me gray, but it's worth it. It's, it is absolutely, you know, I do acknowledge that. Even though it's, it's super stressful, uh, I'm now completely broke. I'll be eating beans for weeks, um, which is awesome. Uh, at the same time, don't regret it all. Totally worth it. I think it's going to be a great time, and uh, we'll stream it live and all that good stuff. Patreon.com slash today if you want to support us. And as the crew gets out here, I'll try to take some videos and post them there for you patrons too. Patreon exclusives, as it were. Patreon.com slash today. And thanks to all 475 of you. You guys rock. All right, now we're going to get out of here. And uh, I asked Imacon, because imacon has been on fire. Like, the th- last three or four videos that were really good on this show, I think Imacon found them in the chat room, so... Even though Amicon doesn't make it in the uh, in the mumble room, he's here every day in the chat room, and he's been uh, totally scoring us some great end of show videos, which has been really helpful since I've been um, really kind of running by the uh, skin of my teeth around. And I said, you know, we got to do a good classic PC game. We've done some consoles, we've done the Nintendo, the Sega, the Dreamcast. We talked about all that stuff. We haven't really celebrated PC gaming that much, and I think what's just kind of ridiculous about that is I'm way more of a PC gamer than I am a console gamer. I don't even I don't even own a current generation console. Uh, I do have a PS3, but that's it. And um, I, I just, I've been negligent. And I know you guys on the whole, I think my sense is a lot more of you are PC gamers than you are console gamers. So with that, we have to celebrate one of the classics. It is an Atari commercial. It's a retro game commercial. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the hint at that. I think I'll figure out pretty quick what this one is about. So with that, I'll say join us Sunday for the Linux Action Show. Noah will be in studio. In fact, he'll be in studio in a couple of hours. That'll be really exciting. And uh, Sunday, so we'll have a big show, and then we have the faux show scheduled as well. All things are in flux as we are accommodating different situations. I doubt last is going to get canceled though so i want you to show up on sunday hang out with Noah and i in person and then on monday we will have coda radio and then on tuesday i'll have tech talk we'll be back as long as we don't have to pick anybody up from the airport and i'm going to pull one of those guys on mic probably noah and have him join us in studio too so we'll have him here for tech talk all right well i'll leave it at that don't forget jblive.tv 9 a.m noon pacific when all is as ordinary and tech talk today.reddit.com always helps this show and when we're super time crunched rounding up the best stories is really beneficial With all of that pluggy plug plugged, I'm now going to play our end of show clip. See you next week, everybody. Thanks for being here. And I say to you, my brothers and sisters, hell is a deep, dark, foul-smelling prison of the damned. Hell, hell with fire and brimstone, lost souls and demons. And how do you escape this eternal damnation? You blast the nasty demons right between their beating little eyes. 64-bit Atari Jaguar.